Good evening from Xfinity Center. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show, Maryland 86. George Mason, 63. I'm Wayne Viner, Bruce Bosner, special guest, Dr. Mark Sowell. Bruce, take it away. Mark, welcome in. Great win tonight. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Tell us about the tremendous fundraiser you had. Uh, was a week this week in uh, Jersey, in Maryland, in in New Jersey, in Red Bank, New Jersey. We had about oh, 80 folks, and we raised somewhere about one hundred and eighty thousand uh, dollars for the new performance center, the basketball performance center. Williams is like a magnet, isn't he? <laughs> he sure is. All right, how'd it go? Great speeches, great, everything? great speech. Harvey was there. We had a lot of great, great. Boomer, the Boomer Show. No, <laughs> uh, but Harvey is but Lee Harvey. Becker. Lee Becker did show. All right, and he was very supportive. Donated to the Boomer. Donated to the silent auction. We had a great oh, time. Boomer, he's so the best. Harvey he's the best. Sanders. Talk about him for a moment. Oh, his passion is unbelievable. Um, I, 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 there's no words for Harvey for this program. What he brings every single day. His compassion. His his passion. He, he's just he's amazing. Mark, what do you think so far? Five and zero. Oh? This was one of their toughest game. Oh and they, yeah, they manhandled this team. Oh Tarja yeah. Tarja made some great adjustments defensively, and boom, the game was over. Loved it. Loved every bit of it. All right, but you you were talking about how great Harvey is, but you have done a lot for this university. That's to say the least. To say the least, you were the the guy who put together the group to help Charlie Wysocki. What happened with your family and and what you've done with the new Colt Fieldhouse, and now you're helping to build a practice facility. So you're probably one of the greatest all-time Terps. No, we we just do our part. Each of us does our own little part. And we've been, believe me, we've been on the receiving end of the gifts uh, and, and, the, and the generosity. Uh, we, we're very fortunate. Thank you so very much fortunate. for what you do. And we're Thank looking you. forward to that new performance center. Yes. You staying over or are you driving Oh, yeah, home? we're staying home. Oh, you're staying staying for the game tomorrow, right? Yeah, we'll be here for Nebraska. We'll see you there then. All right. All Thanks. right. We'll be back Thanks. in a moment at Xfinity Center. The Jacklin's Law Group's successes have resulted in many distinguished awards, including Best Personal Injury Trial Law Firm USA, Maryland's Personal Injury Attorney of the Year twice, and Super Lawyers designation every single year. We succeed because we're willing to try cases, and insurance companies know it. That's why their claim reps often grumble they pay us more in settlements than any other lawyers. You deserve a great lawyer. If you've been hurt in a car, truck, or train crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Back at the Xfinity Center, Maryland continues their role. They top what formerly 5-0 George Mason. We'd like to thank Meyer Consulting Engineers of Rockville, Viner Four Gates Consulting, and of course the big dog himself, Rick Jacklich, stepping in with some analysis, Cordell Woodland. All right, guys, Maryland came out a little faster, fell behind, and then Cowan sort of took over. I'll let Ke you know, Cordell talk about Cowan. We talked about it at halftime. It seemed to me like he came in and said, guys, we're Maryland. You're George Mason. We're going to win this game. Yeah, I mean, he, Cowan was definitely the spark tonight. And the good thing for Maryland is they have a lot of guys that can generate that spark at any moment. Tonight it happened to be Cowan, and it became a little contagious for everybody. We saw Makai Mitchell have arguably his best game of the season uh, today. Jalen Smith, of course, with his balance. But definitely uh, Anthony Cowan was the driving force of the team tonight. Wayne, talk about 24. 24, Donta Scott. Brings a toughness from Philadelphia. They played him. I wasn't sure where he was going to fit in. He seems to be the second power forward on this team, but he brings interior toughness, and then he becomes your stretch four. He can handle the ball. You saw him make threes. Guy's dangerous from all over, and he certainly doesn't play like a freshman. So I think that if it's not Lindo, it could be Dante Scott midway through the season ends up being your starting power forward. So you play a team tonight that was 5-0. and oh. You and me had a little trepidation because we felt like this was the best team we played this right. year. Well, I came in, I talked to the Ushers, and they said they missed these inner inner city games between George Mason and the other side of the Beltway, and they probably are going to be really fired up to play Maryland. I said that only matters. It used to matter a lot when people recruited locally, 
but you hear them call out the lineup, this guy's with Florida, that guy's, so they don't have that that type of rivalry in them. Right. And but question for me, where were the two of the Mason fans? They brought all of them. They had 300 what, what? people here. I mean, I, I figured we'd have five or six. I know when Maryland plays George Washington, mm. you know, like at Verizon, it's yeah. like a road game. Well, yeah, you know? but they walk. You can walk to. Yeah, but uh, Maryland's got a million people to draw from, and George mm. Washington has a couple okay. hundred students. So Maryland hits the Thousand. Jets again and ends up leading at the half 43 to 30. They come out, they sort of sputter. It goes from 13 to 9. I went, well, okay. And by the time it hit the 16 minute media time, that was back to 13. Mason makes another run. And they get it to 9. And it goes back to 13. And then Turgeon did something with the defense, Bruce, and Mason was done. Yeah, he. I think he extended the defense out, didn't give him any clean shots from within, had like a diamond in one zone that pushed everything out. And all of a sudden, Mason, I don't know what the percentage was the last three quarters of the game, but the game went from 29 to 24, Mason, to the final score, which means Maryland outscored him by like 30-something. Oh, there was a 19 to 2 run, and then a similar run in the second half. Uh, let's, go let's go down the list. All right. Tomorrow, 9 o'clock, uh, Sports Maven, followed by In the Nest on Saturday. Uh, so Jalen Smith had his typical game, another slow starter, but a, a big finisher. Once again, he, he didn't score. With five minutes left in the first half, he had two shots and didn't score. One thing I'm interested in is what he's trying to do or what Maryland's trying to do with him, trying to make him either a stretch four or stretch five. To me, and I know it's early, this isn't working. The guy is not making outside shots. What's your take on that? Well, a couple of times he was on the he was on the block a few times, but it seemed like Maryland wasn't really trusting the pass to dump it down inside to him, so they settled for outside shots. So it almost seemed like in order for him to get involved offensively, he either had to get it off an offensive rebound or force the long-range shot. And as of now, the jumper isn't there. You'd like to see him bang more down low, but they've got to find a way to dump it down to him. It's a lot easier your shot when you're inside yeah. that okay. half circle. So why aren't, why do you think Maryland is not feeding the post? To me, they have no post game until you got Makai Mitchell no, I in. Did, I, I disagree a little bit. I think they did as the game went on and they kept missing. I think that might have been one of the timeouts was stop with the, they were shooting the ball after five seconds, right. you know, right. instead of trying to get right. it down low. Hold on, we got, one, we got one special guest. Can we get you for the post game show? This young man, this young man, <laughs> half uh, Charlie, court, baby. Charlie, you made it from half court. I did. That was a, it was a three pointer than half court or just half It was court? a layup, free throw, a three pointer and half court shot. And the and half I, court was worth how much? 500 bucks. No, no. Hey, I'll take it, I'll take it. I told all my buddies when I was selected, if I make the free throw, I'm gonna win. Cool. I like the confidence. That it is was confidence. It was a dead swish. It was Honestly, my brothers and I have been practicing this 30 second challenge for eight years, 10 years. Really? Yep, we've been going to games since. How were you selected, a random or what? Yeah, I saw a lady with a piece of paper and I went up to her and I said, hey, how do I make? How do I get a shot to make the half court shot? This is Dave. She said, you're talking to the right person. Dave didn't said, know who they were dealing said, with, Give man. me a shot, give me a shot. Right. <laughs> a student, former student? I'm a graduate student, doing my part-time MBA at the uh, Baltimore campus. Cool. cool. Hey, how was traffic getting down here? Honestly, the 7 p.m. games are rough. Um, 6 p.m. games even worse. He was with me an hour and a half anyway. <laughs> look at it. We got here. We got here early, um, and you know, staked out our territory, and it was fun. It wasn't too bad. Do you have any eligibility left? I have four years. All right, they can use hey. son. George Mason could use you tonight. 15 hey. minutes of fame, baby. You had it tonight. Thank you guys. You had it. <laughs> Great shot. Hopefully they, they bring you back at the last game for a, a shoot off. You should hey, be I'll here. do it. I'll Tournament do it. of champions for you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate the time. We'll be back at Xfinity Center in a moment. This is Mason Miner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. All right, tomorrow you mention the radio shows. We'll do it again, 9 a.m. on 1300 CBS Sports Radio. It's the Sports Maven. It's the last home game for Maryland, so you'll be talking some football. Hopefully we will get intern Mason, who came back from Florida to go to the game. Definitely. And then Are we supposed to have rain tomorrow? It's supposed to rain tomorrow. Oh, boy. And wow. we'll do what we can. You have In the Nest, 
you got a Super Bowl contender, and you're hoping you're going to Florida this uh, February. M MVP, that's what we say. And the MVP. MVP. All right, Maryland is now off on the basketball court until 11 a.m. on Thanksgiving Day. You can catch them against the Temple Owls, and then they either get Harvard or the number 12-ranked Texas Tech Red Raiders you saw in the Final Four last year, and that'll do it. We will see you next video. We'll be after the Maryland-Nebraska game. We'll be on the field, rain or shine, tomorrow afternoon. Bruce, good show. That's it. Great win, 5-0. and oh. Temple's next. Take them one at a time. You got it. Run the streak as long as we can. Good evening from Xfinity Center.